Hi everybody, um, I'm Dr. Gail Marinsky. Um, you can call me Dr. M. And I am here for one of the summer reading stories, um, Wild Adventures. And today we're going to blast off into space. So the first thing I want to talk about just is a little bit about space um, and our planet Earth, which is one of nine planets that travels around the sun. And so we are actually the third planet closest to the sun, um, and then our moon, and then Mars. And then there are three more, there's a bunch more planets all the way out here, very, very far away, very cold. Um, these are very hot, these two. We're kind of right in the middle, and we happen to be one of the only planets that um, has water on it. So it's good we're where we are in space because if we were too close to the um, sun it would boil if we would to be too far away um, it would freeze so we're going to spend time today um, one of the things um, i'm sure you've heard about space travel and heard about astronauts um, has anyone heard of the term nasa um, and that is where um, folks go to become to learn to be astronauts and learn to travel in space. So, so far we have gone to the moon and we have landed on Mars. And so we're going to spend some time today learning what it's like to be an astronaut and what um, you have, what astronauts do. So with that in mind, as we explore space, we're gonna start out with a book called Good Night Astronaut. And it has been, it's written by Scott Kelly who actually is an astronaut. And what is amazing as we read this story, it's actually about two astronauts. And those two astronauts. Mark was born for adventure, a blur of motion and energy times two, because there was Scott, who also were twin trailblazers for almost anything. Does anybody have a twin brother or sister? You know what it's like to be able to explore with your brother or sister? Well, that's what Scott and Mark did most all their life. But even explorers get tired. They, we fight sleep like an enemy. Mom says rest is our friend. If you close your eyes and dare to dream, you can go anywhere, you can do anything. And you can see the Mark and um, Scott up in, the, up in the sky dreaming about what it might be like to be in space. Mom says, good night, my astronauts. Beds are boring, but sleeping high off the ground, snug in our bags like cocoons, take us a step closer to the moon. The yard seems awake and alive, the stars are shimmering night lights. Up in the treehouse, they feel like they're in the sky. And can you find the telescope that helps them see the stars and the moon? On a family cruise, our boat rocks us to sleep, feet to feet in our matching berths. When the waves are rough, we bounce into the air and float just for a second, like we are in zero gravity of space. So they kind of always liked this tight quarters. They liked the feeling of floating. Wonder if that's like partly why uh, they become astronauts. As brothers grow up, we chase dreams of our own. On my first solo adventure, the woods seem so big and my tent feels so small. The hard ground cradles me as the wind lulls me to sleep. Good morning. I carry my home in a backpack on my back, ready to chart my new path. I would imagine astronauts carry things on their back too, don't you think? At school, on the ocean, sailors crowd the ship decks learning to steer. I take the helm, watching the horizon, exploring the high seas. So as a young man, he's learning to drive a ship. Then I grab some sleep in a narrow bunk, stacked three beds tall. Sleep tight, crewmates. Can you imagine having two people on top of you in beds? And you can see, what's he dreaming about? I see a rocket. 
He's dreaming about blasting off into space. Sliding silently through the sea, we patrol the depths under the crushing weight of water, safe in a long metal tube. I wonder what they're in. We're secret sentries guarding against danger in our submarines. Below the ocean waves, under the periscope, to lift our eyes above the water. When our watch is over, we eat in the mess, and then we hot rack to sleep, taking turns because there are most peop more people than beds. Um, hot racking means they take turns, so we learned that they sleep three on top of each other. Well, there's three in those beds for six hours or so many hours, and then they get out and work, and three more go back into the bed. That's what they call hot racking and that would be um, if you were in the Navy. Um, Scott was in the Navy for a while. The skies called me back up to the surface to become a floating pilot. I always go for launch in a jet called a Tomcat on a carrier ship. In a cockpit, on a flight deck, strapped in tight, I stand alert. But waiting can be tiring. So a quick combat nap keeps me ready to fly whenever and wherever I'm needed. So that's kind of like flying a spaceship, isn't it? Do you think he's getting ready to be an astronaut? Icy woods are chilling, a frozen world, like the darkness of space, we learn to survive in this dangerous place and sleep in a snow house tucked in between friends. Again, he's always sleeping in tight quarters. Our wintry blanket keeps us warm inside, but not too toasty, or our shelter will melt around us. They're sleeping in an igloo. Aquanauts learn to be astronauts living under the sea. I sleep in a fishbowl dreaming of space, the place I long to be. As the sea life looks in, wondering what aliens have invaded their watery home. Ooh. As I sleep under a clear bubble in the far north, the aurora borealis paints the night sky with a rainbow of color from the solar wind bumping into the Earth's outer reaches. Some night times they call that the northern lights. The dancing lights put on a magical show. You see all the green and the blue and the red in the sky from the um, solar wind. Again, he's always interested in space and what's going on up there in the sky. A yurt is the perfect shelter for a high alpine perch, Mount Everest Base Camp, the ne near the highest place on Earth. So he's climbed a mountain. There's so little oxygen, it sometimes hurts to breathe. More stars than I've ever seen, some close enough to touch. After all the training, hard work, and dreaming, I finally leave the Earth on a shuttle called Discovery. See the big rocket that blasts off? And you'll see United States, and then down in the corner is the NASA label. That is our um, program for space. An astronaut at last. I work and sleep with our crew of seven in a workspace the size of a double-decker minivan. Can you imagine how small that is for seven people? But he's been, work he's been living in small spaces all his life. Spending Christmas among the stars is an unforgettable gift. One brother on earth and the other above, one watches over our planet and as the other watches over our families. Then we switch places. Now it's my turn to live in space for a whole year. I learned to sleep in a bag hanging on a wall as visions of our beautiful planet fill my mind and my heart. Many trips, many missions, our shared dreams have come true. Um, we have a space station up in space, and that is where he stayed for a year and did all kinds of experiments and learned more about our, um, the solar system. 
of all the places I've gone and the places I've slept, I've come to discover the home is the best in my own cozy bed with my family nearby. I sleep soundly knowing my mission is done. So good night, future astronaut. Start dreaming your adventures await. Now the last pages of the book really show, and you'll get to see it, really are pictures of Scott and Mark when they were little boys, when they were on their boat. And what these pictures really talk about is how important and how hard they worked to become astronauts. Because first they were submarine um, agents, they were submarine folks, then they um, They did the boat, they did the um, Tomcat, and they were underwater, um, and then finally he got to be um, a, an astronaut on the Discovery mission. So you can see, you can dream and dream, and if you work hard, you can become what you want and experience that really exciting thing, like seeing what space is like. Now, we talked about this was by Scott Kelly, astronaut Scott Kelly. Now I have one other book to read that talks about a, an astronaut, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an astronaut you might not imagine, and it's a special astronaut. And this book is by Mark Kelly, who is Scott's brother and also an astronaut for NASA. And this one is called Mousetronaut. But it's also going to show us just what it's like to go to space. Um, and you can see on this first um, page, you're in the space shuttle. The space shuttle is set for a launch, and the astronauts are doing their last-minute training to prepare for the mission. So you can see them all in their spots with their, um, their suits on and their helmets, and they're getting ready to launch. Then we see some, ma some mice. What could those mice be doing? NASA is sending along some special guests for this flight, and they're training too. Just like the astronauts have to do all kinds of training, they've been putting the mouses, the mice, through some training. You can see they're doing their exercises, they're doing shapes and doing um, things that make them think. One mouse is smaller than all the rest. His name is Meteor. The other mice know he won't be chosen for the important mission. But someone has his eye on Meteor. Oh, I think the astronaut does. And he's impressed with the little mouse's hard work. Remember in the last book we talked about how hard it was to get ready to be prepared to go to space. Um, and so Meteor's been working on it too. The shuttle commander announces that six mice will be selected for the flight. He picks five of the biggest, strongest mice. But for the fifth, sixth spot, to everyone's surprise, guess who he chooses? You're right, he chooses Meteor. All six are taken to their new home, a special cage called the Mouse Hotel see the mouse hotel there. The other mice are nervous as the countdown begins, but not Meteor. He's so excited. He's so ready. So as um, what happens, we're going to have a countdown. Everybody's in their place. So come along and count with me. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, lift off! And there it goes. The shuttle, the rocket is off into space. At first, the mice are pressed flat against their cages by the power of the launch. It takes a lot to put that rocket in the air. But then the pressure goes away. The other mice cling to their cage in terror, but not Meteor. He loves the feeling of weightness. He's just floating around. Hey, little guy, the commander says, you're a natural, a real live mousetronaut. Meteor is taken from his cage and gets a tour of the shuttle. He can even see the Earth way 
off in the distance. Can you guys see the earth? Just a little bit of it out the window. The astronauts are all very busy during the 14 day flight. They are away. There are spacewalks to take and experiments to conduct. You can see they're out of the um, space capsule and they're doing some of their work. But what can Meteor do to help? I don't know. What do you think he can do? Then while answering an email, one of the astronauts notices the key to the control panel stuck between the monitors. Can you see the, can you find the key that's stuck there? When he tries to get it out, it accidentally gets wedged further down. This is good, says the commander. We need that key back. One astronaut tries to move the monitor. It doesn't move, it doesn't budge. Another slips her fingers into the crack, but the key is stuck down too deep. One even tries pushing it out with a long piece of metal, but with no luck, no one can reach it. The astronauts are getting worried, but as they discuss the problem, a tiny figure has an idea. Being the smart, smallest isn't a bad thing, Meteor says to himself. Maybe I can be useful on this flight. What do you think? Do you think he can help them out? Yep. Meteor squeezes his way into the crack. The space is dark and cramped, but Meteor spots the key and tugs at it with all his might. Hey, look at what our tiny friend has done, the commander says. He saved our mission. When the shuttle returns to Earth, Meteor is declared a hero. He's even given a brand new uniform and an official title, Mousetronaut. All the astronauts cheer and applaud, but Meteor is already thinking about his next big mission. Thanks for joining me as we um, explore um, the space in our blast off with our rockets. I have a great rocket project that goes along with our stories today and you can make your own rocket just like um, the astronaut blasted off into space or our um, astronaut Kelly's. Um, the first thing you might want to do is go on a little scavenger hunt. You'll need a few things for the project but um, I'm sure they're mostly everything that's in your house um, we, you, the biggest thing you'll need is either a paper, uh, paper towel roll or a toilet paper roll. Um, and then I, uh, some clothespins, um, the kinds of school supplies, um, scissors, glue, and tape. And then you can, um, also markers, crayons, paint, um, any kinds of doodads that you would like to use. Um, for decoration. As you can see, I used a button for the window. I happen to have some um, stickers, so I use them for stars. Um, and I um, just painted some stripes on my um, paper towel. So I'm going to use a paper towel just because it's a little bigger um, and you can see it. So the first thing you would do is um, make it whatever color you would like. So I just painted it white, um, but you could paint it any color that you wanted. Um, you could actually just use it like this and draw or paint on it. Um, you don't have to do anything to it if you don't want. Um, or you could take it and actually roll it in paper if you wanted it to be a color. Cut it, tape it, and then go ahead and decorate it. Um, you could also do it with foil. Um, but I don't think that things will stick to the foil or the markers will work on the foil. So I chose white paint because it's a clean palette and you can do anything you want. Um, so the first thing you would do after you've got it painted um, or have it the way you want it, you would then start to decorate it. So you would do your red and your blue. I put a little door on there. Um, anything that you want to put on there, you'll want to do that first because that it will um, be easier for it to stay. So um, go ahead and decorate it. And then once you have it decorated, the next two things are we'll work on the flames. So um, also in addition to the supplies I mentioned, tissue paper is helpful and construction paper um, or any of those types of things. So I had orange and red because that makes me think of hot. 
um, and they take one strip of paper and what I kind of did was want it to be I wrapped it around and then gave myself some extra so you basically want a rectangle and then you want to get your glue stick and you're going to take your glue stick and you're going to go all the way around the inside of your tube with the glue stick and then you can do the tissue paper one of two ways one you can kind of put it in there and wrap it around um, sticking it or what I did was wrapped it put it in like a circle and then kind of bunched it up and then put it in side and then it's good to hold it for a couple minutes couple seconds or so just so that you can go around and make sure that it's stuck and that's that part so it seems to be sticking pretty good let's leave that for a minute give it a chance to dry the next thing you'll want to do, um, again, I chose red, but you can choose any color you want. And basically, um, take a sheet of paper, fold it in half, and that's what you have. And then you fold it in half again, and you have a quarter sheet. And then what you do with the quarter sheet is you hold it like this and pull it together like that. You want to match those two seams up. Now this is where if you have some extra hands, it's always helpful. Um, piece of tape is probably the easiest way to seal that up. You can see this. Putting the tape on the seam, folding it together. And that's going to give us our, our cone for our top of our rocket. And then you'll get a scissors, and all you do is basically cut around circle from one side to the next. And all the way around till you get to your tape seam again. And there's your cone. So, three clothespins if you have them is perfect. And you have to find the right spots for your clothespins because of the, the glue in there. So you want to kind of get them in there as best you can. And pull your paper out. not working so good our fire is stuck up in there and then you usually have to play with them till they stand right and then the same thing you do a glue a little bit on both sides And this one seems a little big, so I'm going to do another little cut on it. And then you, and again, it'll need a minute or two just to hold it till it sticks. And there you go. That's the start of your rocket. We know yours will look better because yours will be decorated also.
you also want to make sure you have the, all the same. There we go. Ta-da! Lift off.